No. You're live. Oh, we're live. So my husband is going to just check to make sure we're good on Facebook. Okay, perfect. Just want to make sure the light is good here. My husband is going to just check to make sure we're good on Facebook. Trying to get some flowers too. Okay, we're good. Tu nous entends bien? Okay. Okay, good. Okay, pas de, make sure you share on uh, different pages. Okay, perfect. So, so happy, so happy to have uh, uh, you. Uh, give me just one second, Dan. We're hearing the sound here. J'entends mon son ici qui revient dans l'ordinateur. Ça devrait fonctionner comme ça. So do you hear me correctly? I do. Okay, perfect. And I hear and you and and I hear you super. So I'm so excited. So let me introduce you to everyone. Um, uh, so uh, I'm just going to switch in French. And as we do with questions, please make sure you keep your answer your answers in short. Uh, paragraphs. So I, I'm not too uh, lost to translate. Alors, euh, bonsoir tout le monde. Bienvenue pour une autre entrevue sur Ariel Ayurveda. Et puis, on étudie ensemble Ayurveda, on apprend ensemble, on grandit ensemble. Et c'est un bonheur pour moi ce soir de recevoir euh, le docteur Manjiri Nadkarni. Et euh, hello, docteur. Hello. Et euh, ce soir, nous allons parler euh, des causes de l'inflammation selon l'Ayurveda parce que beaucoup de femmes m'ont parlé à quel point l'inflammation était en grande, grande croissance et j'en suis la preuve avec un peu d'inflammation, moi, ce soir. Donc, hein, pita dans la grande chaleur. <rire> donc, euh, alors, je, I'll let you introduce yourself. On va alterner français-anglais tout le long de l'entrevue, donc merci de votre compréhension, parce que l'on le fait sur nos deux pages. So, doctor, I'll let you introduce yourself, and then I'll, I'll uh, um, uh, translate your resume, uh, which is quite impressive, right after you. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Um, I'm Dr. Manjiri Narkarni. I'm an Ayurvedic MD. I specialize in diagnostics, Ayurvedic pathology. I love teaching. I don't really like talking too much about myself I'll try to keep it short uh, and uh, I started Ayurveda as a patient rather than as a practitioner so the reason I'm so passionate about Ayurveda is because that's the one that gave me answers when everything else failed me other holistic systems or modern medicine different specialist endocrinologist when I was going through my health challenges as a teenager I didn't find answers anywhere till I found Ayurveda and that's why I'm so passionate and I love teaching it. Um, I teach for the Southern California University of Health Sciences, their Ayurveda practitioner program. I'm also one of the founders of Ayurveda Association of Canada. I'm also the ex-president um, of Ayurveda Association of Canada and I practice in Sarnia, Ontario since 2014. Um, I see people all over the world in my clinic, you know, through virtual consultations. So super honored to be here. Thank you. And, uh, but you didn't talk about all your diplomas, like your, your, <laughs> <laughs> oh, do you want to mention those before I translate? Yeah. So I am an MD in Ayurveda. I have done no, my just for, just for the skeptics out there. <laughs> MD in Ayurveda, specializing in Ayurvedic pathology diagnostics, uh, Bachelor of Ayurvedic Medicine and Surgery, 
I'm also a holistic nutritionist. So I've done like a um, diploma in natural nutrition. I've done a certificate in base allergy therapy. I have an education in postgraduate diploma in yoga and naturopathy as well from India. I have a certificate in hair mineral analysis. I keep learning all the time. So it's yeah. hard for me to go through everything. Amazing. And uh, you're just an amazing teacher before I go ahead. And I met Dr. Nadkani. I had seen you before in Association of uh, Ayurveda in Canada, but when you were president, but I truly had a crush on you, <laughs> like just a soul crush. But when I, I, I saw you teach recently on your five days gut challenge, that is now turning in eight or 10, which is amazing. We'll talk some more at the end. Yeah, that's the way you call it, right? Five, five, five day gut. Yeah, yeah. Five day gut reset. Yeah. So amazing, amazing. Uh, what we uh, lived in the group and all your content, your, all your teachings. Donc, je vais vous présenter Dr. Nat Carney et merci beaucoup d'être patient pour la traduction. Donc, Dr. Manjiri Nat Carney est docteur ayurvédique. Elle est euh, nutritionniste holistique agréée, consultante certifiée en allergie de base, conférencière et éducatrice internationale. Elle a été euh, fondatrice de l'Association la, de l'Ayurveda euh, au Canada et c'est l'ex-présidente. Euh, je ne traduirai pas tous ses diplômes qu'elle a nommés en anglais parce qu'on va rentrer dans le vif du sujet, mais ça, elle adore enseigner. Euh, et pourquoi elle est si passionnée de l'Ayurveda, c'est parce que c'est la seule discipline qui lui a donné, tu t'assureras Dan que les gens m'entendent bien, parce que moi je ne vois pas l'audience, merci infiniment, donc c'est la seule euh, discipline qui lui a donné les réponses qu'elle cherchait quand elle était adolescente. Euh, et donc, euh, elle, euh, sa mission... Sa mission, c'est d'éduquer, d'autonomiser les femmes en utilisant le super pouvoir de l'Ayurveda et de les aider à guérir au plus profond d'elles-mêmes en, éliminant, en éliminant, dis-je bien, la cause profonde. Elle se spécialise dans l'intégration de la médecine ayurvédique ancienne à la nutrition holistique moderne et travaille sur les maladies chroniques telles que les troubles digestifs, les déséquilibres hormonaux et les troubles métaboliques. Donc, euh, si vous voulez en apprendre plus, son nom, c'est son site web. Je vais mettre les références euh, après l'entrevue. I will put all the indication of how to work with Dr. Nat Carney after the interview. Euh, et je veux juste terminer en disant qu'elle reste à Sarnia, Ontario, euh, mais qu'elle pratique depuis 2014. Et... Euh, Oh, no, you, you haven't started in 2014. You live in Ontario since, 20, since 2014. Yeah, so I've been teaching, practicing in India before I moved okay. to, yeah. That's what I thought. So, uh, elle, elle reste en Ontario depuis 2014. Ses clients sont de partout dans le monde. Donc, elle travaille aussi en vidéo conférence. Donc, uh, Dr. Nat Carney, so without further ado, I'd like to start with our first question, uh, mm -hmm. if it's good for you. First, if it's okay and you can give me short answers, um, can you define for us what is infl inflammation as per Ayurveda? So as per Ayurveda, we don't talk about inflammation just as the word inflammation. Inflammation comes in the context of various diseases. Uh, one of the main diseases in Ayurveda called Jwara, which can be loosely translated to fever, talks in details about inflammatory processes that happen in the body, especially at the level of different tissue systems. So I think it's even more extensive than the modern understanding of inflammation without actually coining the word inflammation. Uh, inflammation from an Ayurvedic perspective can be understood. I'm just taking notes, I'm listening. Yeah, I'm taking yeah. Notes. yeah, it can be understood as dosha vaishamya. So we talk about prakruti or balance and we talk about vikruti or imbalance. So whenever there are processes in the body that are happening, which throw our body out of balance, 
and the pitta is deranged to more extent but vata kapha are also going to be out of balance that will start the inflammatory process in the body and that is why we see so much of inflammation in a chapter called jwara chikitsa in ayurveda and jwara is literally meant as fever you know the loose translation goes to fever so lots of inflammatory processes are described in that context of fever in ayurveda okay donc dr nankarni mentionne que en ayurveda ils ont jamais euh, été juste pour le mot inflammation c'est pas mentionné comme ça elle trouve que la façon de l'ayurveda d'approcher l'inflammation est beaucoup plus en profondeur et mieux comprise et mieux rendue parce que c'est étudié sous le terme de la fièvre et donc euh, et c'est de la fièvre à propos des tissus et typiquement si on va parler de d'être de votre constitution prakruti donc quand euh, qui est votre constitution d'origine qui est votre constitution quand vous êtes en équilibre et vikruti qui est votre qui votre euh, euh, photo au moment même quand vous êtes en déséquilibre selon évidemment votre constitution des trois doshas au moment d'origine, donc au moment de votre conception. Maintenant, ce qu'il faut comprendre aussi, c'est qu'elle dit que typiquement, cette fièvre-là s'installe quand euh, Pita augmente dans le corps, puis Pita d'habitude va l'aider, mais Kappa et Vata vont être impliqués aussi dans le processus et peuvent euh, être associés aussi à cette euh, inflammation là, mais qui est vu, c'est un grand chapitre en Ayurveda qui est vu sous fièvre. Euh, donc, yeah. so, so, um, so then when I speak to you about Ayurveda, if I'm understanding correctly uh, about inflammation, what what you translate it when you hear me is fever, is heat, overgeneralized heat, correct? Yeah. Yeah, so overgeneralized heat accompanied by other, you know, processes happening at the same time. So when we look at the modern definition of inflammation, for example, if we are trying to understand, we look at, you know, uh, redness is one of the characteristics. Heat is another characteristic of inflammation. There is also pain and there is also swelling. And the fifth one we talk is the loss of function. When we look at this from an Ayurvedic snapshot, the heat redness are from the pitta. Swelling usually is related to kapha oh, yeah. and pain is typically associated with vata. So when we talk about inflammation, we are looking at imbalances in all the three doshas. You know, so in my opinion, you know, I know we have a tendency of always attaching it to an imbalance pitta, but yeah. when pitta is thrown out of balance to that extent it is going to impact the vata and kapha as well it's going to challenge the harmony of the other two doshas yeah so an example is you know when fire is too high it will dry everything out right all the moisture is dried up and that will lead to imbalances in vata as well as kapha too beautiful i love the analogy with the fire so let me just translate that And then we can move on to the other question, but it's, it's just so enlightening. Alors, ce que Dr. Nadkarni euh, explique, c'est que, euh, donc je lui dis, quand je dis inflammation, dans votre tête de Dr. Ayurvedic, ce qui vient, c'est fièvre. Elle dit, puis j'ai dit, est-ce que vous pensez à ce moment-là à une, une chaleur généralisée dans le corps? Parce que moi, c'est ce que je voyais dans mes, dans mes préliminaires, des, mes cours préliminaires en Ayurveda. Et elle dit, euh, en fait, c'est une, une chaleur généralisée dans le corps, mais accompagnée d'autres processus. Et elle dit, il y a typiquement cinq euh, 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 indices de l'inflammation. Donc, cinq symptômes. Il va y avoir de la rougeur, il va y avoir de la chaleur, qui ça, sont typiquement associés au dosha euh, pita. Après ça, l'autre symptôme, c'est euh, la douleur qui est associé à Vata, de l'enflure qui est associé au dosha Kappa et à la fin, une perte de fonction. Et elle dit que euh, c'est comme une maison qui brûle. La maison qui brûle, c'est peut être associé à Pita, mais ça va enlever l'hydratation et, et toute euh, 
euh, les fluides, l'hydratation, l'humidité dans la maison, ce qui est associé à Kappa, et ça va tout sécher autour, ce qui est associé à Vata. Donc, beautiful. Now, I'd like to ask you um, why that is, I think, my most important question of the, the tonight. Why do you think it has so increased and so generalized now? Is it just me or everybody's inflamed? Like, what's going on? I think everybody's inflamed. I think we have very few people that are in the state of health today. And um, there are multiple factors for it. But the one thing is, you know, we have forgotten to stop and pay attention to health. You know, we are all running after something uh, at the expense of our health, at the expense of eating good food, at the expense of regular exercise, at the expense of a restful sleep, at the expense of, you know, your emotions. So, I think we're so disconnected with ourselves. We are so disconnected with nature that a lot of us don't even know what's happening in the body. And inflammation is a process that designed to help us. So if you go through any infections, if you go through any wounds, you know, it is a body's healing process that's supposed to stop that infection. It's supposed to be designed for killing the bacteria or viruses that attack your system or help the wound heal itself. But because of this low grade inflammation that we are living with every day, the process in the body goes haywire. And today, from a modern perspective, every single disease, right from diabetes, arthritis, until cancer, low grade inflammation has been seen as the culprit behind all these diseases but mm -hmm. in a gist you know it's the disconnection with ourselves it's the disconnection with the nature with our food you know uh, so we are on like a hamster wheel you know you're going round and round in circles you're trying to achieve your targets you don't feel you're getting anything done but you're losing health you're losing sleep you're losing your mental health all the time And when you mention, I'm sorry, just water break. Uh -huh. When you mentioned, um, you said diabetes, cancer, what is the other disease you mentioned? Is it arthritis? Ar arthritis, yeah. So anything with the word itis is an inflammation. So when we talk about arthritis, it's the joint inflammation. When we talk about colitis, it's the inflammation of the large intestine. Yeah. Yeah. So whenever there is the word itis, that is direct inflammation that's attacking your body. Okay. So, wow. Okay. So, and so you associate it with the disconnect and with the, the, the running around, the speed yeah. in which... Yeah, because that's the cause that's affecting everything else. You know, we don't take time to nourish ourselves. We go for quick fixes, fast food, everything in the microwave, pre-made foods, frozen foods. Then we lose control of emotions because we are not getting that nourishment from food. Then we look for sugar, right? Because the emotions are not stable. You have a lot of anxiety. That sugar is helping you feel instantly better. Then you feel worse again. Then you go for the second round, right? Lack of exercise. There is no lymphatics movement. There is no time for us to exercise. So health goes out of the door. Yeah. Then you're anxious at night. You're not sleeping. So the body cannot repair itself. So this fast track life that we try feeding into is not helping us. Yeah, we were never meant, the body was never meant to be carried with that much amount of stress. Yeah. It's a lot more fragile than it than it looks. I find, um, and and that identification, yeah, to our job and to our our the persona that we made. You know that it's not made to be. Um, yeah, like we identify with everything but ourselves. You know we don't identify. Like I have so many people who come to me and they're like, if I ask them a simple question, what do you really enjoy? And they are like, I have no idea. I just work. Right. So sometimes you're disconnected when I ask about how is your digestion? How is the bowel moment? Oh, I don't know. I don't pay attention. Yeah, they don't know. Yeah. 
do you feel satisfied with food you eat or oh, i don't know you know i watch tv when i'm eating right so I that is connect yeah. everywhere yeah it's it's fabulous what you're saying and it's to the point i'm just going to make that caveat before i translate it's to the point that uh, people now put the term okay as a feeling like yeah. you're saying you know how's your digestion it's okay well <laughs> It doesn't tell anything. Like, yeah. yeah. Okay, so let me just translate. Um, alors, euh, donc, je lui ai demandé au docteur Nakarni, j'ai dit, mais comment ça? Pouvez-vous nous dire pourquoi que ça a tellement augmenté l'inflammation et pourquoi c'est tellement généralisé dans la société en ce moment? Et elle m'a répondu, je crois personnellement que tout le monde est en, en inflammation en ce moment qu'on euh, a oublié d'arrêter et euh, de regarder notre santé, non, vraiment la regarder notre santé. Et on est en train de courir constamment euh, à, après, après nos objectifs, mais euh, euh, au, au dépens de euh, notre santé émotionnelle, euh, notre sommeil, euh, les choses dans le micro-ondes, les choses dans le congélateur, on n'a pas le temps de se faire de la bonne nourriture. Et parce qu'on n'a pas le temps de se faire de la bonne nourriture, on ne se sent pas vraiment satisfait. On n'a pas été suffisamment nourri. Et là, qu'est-ce qui arrive? On va aller pour le sucre. On va aller pour les raccourcis. On va aller pour les band aid Mais ça n'a pas réglé les problèmes de base et sur une roue qui s'accélère et qui s'amplifie. Et, euh, et elle mentionne que euh, l'inflammation est conçue à l'intérieur de notre corps pour... Euh, pour euh, guérir, c'est un processus de guérison l'inflammation. Donc, ça arrive dans le corps pour, euh, si on se fait une coupure, ça va rougir un peu, puis là, ça, avant de se mettre à cicatriser et tout, c'est le processus pour tuer les bactéries. Mais à cause qu'on crée un chaos autour, ça, ça ne remplit plus sa fonction et euh, ce chaos-là empire et là, on fait face au diabète, on fait face au cancer à l'arthrite et tout ce qui finit par euh, les hits, là, donc c'est associé à de l'inflammation. Euh, les gastrites, les, alors, voilà. euh, les colites, etc., etc. Sorry about the noise. Let me just uh, fix my light two seconds. Yeah, no problem. A bit too much light as the sun is coming down. Perfect. Just so I don't <laughs> radiate. Okay. Uh, so let's move on to the other question, unless you wanted to add something. Yeah, so I just wanted to add that, you know, you mentioned uh, a very nice thing that everybody is like, I'm okay, right? But Ayurveda never just looks at okay. In Ayurveda, we always look at optimal, you know, you have to have an optimal mental health, physical health, digestion, bubble moment like everything is supposed to be fantastic right so really high level you're functioning at a very good way and not just like hey I'm okay you know it's okay yeah so we look at optimization we look at the best possible you know and that's why in Ayurveda there is one examination you know in the tenfold examination which we call SAR or the essence you know like how optimal your tissues are so that's also what we check so it's not about being okay right okay is not acceptable if you are an ayurvedic you know practitioner a counselor or somebody who wants to be on that ayurvedic path no matter where you are don't accept okay you know okay is not okay <laughs> beautifully put and and so not only Ayurveda does not normalize being sick, mm -hmm. but it does not accept not being optimal. Yeah, 100%. And we've, we've normalized in the West here being sick. Like it's, we, we, I believe we accept the symptoms like quite easily. See, and pathology today as well. So an example is, you know, there is almost an epidemic of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, 
right? So in the initial days, you know, it was alcohol that would trigger your liver into degeneration. Nowadays, the exposure of chemicals, the environmental toxicity, the pesticide in the food, the lack of sleep, lack of body repairing itself because we're not giving it rest, that stress we carry, you know, the liver bears the brunt of everything and then it starts getting inflamed. When it starts getting inflamed, it will start packing a lot of fat and that becomes the fatty liver disease. I have so many clients who come to me who tell me that, hey, I have fatty liver, but my practitioner told me that it's normal, right? And I said that normal and common are two different things. Common is when it's happening a lot in a lot of people so that we talk about the commonality of it. But normal is what's the physiological process and in no way is fatty liver physiological. It is a pathological state, so it is not normal. So we have learned to accept disease as normal. We've learned to accept that, you know, things are going to ache and pain in the 30s, people talk about not being 20 anymore, but 30 is not the age your body breaks down, nor is 40, nor is 50, nor is 60 or 70, you know, your body breaks down when you stop paying attention to it, till the time you support your body, you support your mind, you give it the right nourishment, your body and mind will support you to do whatever you want. It's a two-way street always, you know, it's never like a one-sided thing. <laughs> like we need t-shirts about this like we need like yeah t-shirts mugs yeah <laughs> so Dr. Natkarni uh, uh, amène la précision importante par rapport à l'Ayurveda et elle dit tu as mentionné quelque chose tantôt Marie-Hélène tu as parlé de OK et tu as parlé de uh, uh, comment les gens s'étaient rendus que il parlait de, de « OK, c'était devenu un sentiment, c'était devenu quasiment une mesure, tu sais, puis on acceptait ça. » Mais elle dit « En Ayurveda, OK, là, c'est inacceptable. Tout praticien ayurvédique, tout docteur ayurvédique qui se respecte va être à la recherche de ce qui est optimal pour son patient et va vouloir que son patient fonctionne de manière optimale. » Et euh, entre autres, on va examiner en Ayurveda tous les, euh, tous les tissus, donc euh, que, de, tous les tissus qui sont formés, que ce soit les muscles, que ce soit le gras, que ce soit les os, que ce soit alors, euh, les organes reproducteurs, tout ça en Ayurveda, on va passer à travers toute l'examination des tissus. Et, euh, et elle dit, juste pour donner un exemple, là, elle dit, c'est commun euh, en Occident de penser que ah, oh, ben, je ne suis plus dans ma trentaine, je n'ai plus 40 ans, c'est normal que mon corps commence à, à moins bien fonctionner. Pas du tout. Elle dit en Ayurveda, il n'y a aucune association qu'il y a un âge, à un moment donné, où ton corps devrait plus te supporter. Le corps ne se défait pas et n'est plus, euh, n'est pas optimal à aucun âge pour l'Ayurveda euh, parce que l'Ayurveda, la façon de penser au niveau du praticien, c'est Tant que tu supportes ton corps, tant que tu supportes ta santé émotionnelle, elle va te supporter et ton corps va te supporter. Et euh, elle a dit aussi, euh, euh, elle a dit, par exemple, on, on voit la ressurgence de quelque chose qu'on ne voyait jamais avant. Un foie qui est gras, typiquement, est associé, euh, c'est une condition, c'était associé à de l'alcool, puis quelqu'un qui prenait de l'alcool. Mais elle dit, maintenant, on voit des Poids qui sont gras euh, et euh, donc c'est une condition, mais dans des situations de personnes qui ne consomment pas d'alcool. Et elle dit qu'elle voit tellement de gens dans sa pratique qui viennent la voir en disant euh, J'ai une condition de foie qui est gras et euh, mon médecin m'a dit que c'était normal. Elle dit Non, non, non. Elle dit Normal et commun n'est pas la même chose. Commun, ça veut dire que beaucoup de gens ont, ont un symptôme ou une condition euh, pathologique. Euh, mais elle dit, normal, c'est quand ça serait physiquement euh, constitué comme ça. Et euh, le foie qui devient gras, euh, c'est une pathologie. 
Donc, c'est juste pour vous montrer comment on est dans des, des presque des antipodes dans certaines situations sur la vision euh, de regarder son patient et euh, ses conditions. So, I wanted to ask another question. Uh, thank you, doctor. It's so generous and so informative. Uh, so, what are the root causes in, in Ayurveda? Look, before we go there, so if, if other doshas have inflammation as well, Right, so you're telling me that somebody who's more vata dominant or kappa dominant can have inflammation, yes? Uh, what I'm saying is when we look at the modern inflammatory process, that's headed yeah. by pitta, but there are yeah. going to be two more soldiers behind, you know? So it's not like a solitary pitta. So if you are a pitta dominant person or a vata dominant person or a kapha dominant person or a dual dosha, If you if your doshas are getting out of balance, yeah. you would get inflammation. Yeah. So it's not just pitta, right? But pitta is going to be one of the dominant ones yeah. uh, when it comes to inflammatory processes. But definitely both the other doshas are involved as well. Yes, but my question, so I'm not clear. So my question is that let's say that we have a vata dominant person. I just want to clarify something and understand it. We have a vata dominant person their pita yeah. aspect of their constitution went out of balance. Yeah. In a vata, is it going to show up differently, the inflammation? Or it's always the five same symptoms that we discussed, heat and swelling? And See, sometimes with low-grade inflammation, you may not even know. Right. So an example is when we look at cancer, for example, you know, nobody knows where it starts and starts invading the whole thing. The signs are seen when the tumor is dominant, but nobody knows when it has started that one point where it started. Nobody talks about it. Right. Ayurveda goes a little bit even further and tries to even prevent things from happening. So we have a lot of preventative health related issue, uh, like related science in Ayurveda, right? So what I'm trying to say is a Vata dominant person, depending on what the diet is, what the lifestyle is, there are chances of different doshas getting provoked, right? So if a Vata dominant person indulges in too much alcohol, you know, they are going to create Pitta yeah. aggravation. Okay. A Vata dominant person starts, you know, uh, exercising too much. Right, we always talk about exercise as something that's really good, but if you see somebody who's exercising two hours a day, right, yeah. it also increases that heat. Yeah. So the heat and the wind factor, they're both going to inflame the person eventually. So everything has to be in moderation. Uh, everything has to be done to protect the doshas. And when you ask about the root cause of diseases in Ayurveda, the very main focus is the doshas that are out of balance. Yeah. Right? So the word dosha comes from the word, the um, shloka is dushanat iti dosha. So the one that has the tendency to wreak a havoc on your system, yeah. you don't control it. So doshas have to be balanced at all times. Now, there is a misconception that If I'm pitta dominant, tomorrow yeah, I'm kapha yeah. dominant, right? So in Ayurveda, we look at your doshas from the very childhood and the natural dominance that is expressed in your characteristics, your hair color, your eye color, your features, your skin. If you have moles or freckles or clear skin, what your body frame is like, that aspect which never changes is known as prakruti. Yeah or the natural constitution. And any time you are going through these dosha related changes, fluctuations, which are throwing your body off balance, that is known as vikruti or imbalance. So you, that- you, Yeah, you've answered my, my question and thank you because I was wondering, and that was the, the point of the question out and you've answered beautifully and you clarified along the way is that We have that tendency that in Vata or in Kappa, the Kappa, you would have the 
uh, inflammation look a different look different but no if it's pita that's leading it's going to look the same but vata will go into a vikuti in a different way than a kappa would go in vikuti this is yeah. this yeah this yeah. is the and see any dosha depending on no matter what dosha is dominant yeah. the dominant dosha is the first one that can go out of balance yeah. but even if a kapha body type starts fasting for too long you know just stops eating or starts exercising too much the body will be able to cope up for some time because of the resilience of kapha but yeah. then even the opposite which is vata can start getting aggravated right similarly yeah. for a vata person if they start having a heavy 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 diet which is not getting digested there can be a lot of kapha related conditions or ama yeah. right so it's very hard to say you know so you have to know and that is why in ayurveda you know it's simple but it's profound at the same time no no kidding and, <laughs> no, no kidding as, as a doctor i have to look at all the factors what changed you know so pitta has changed but what is going on with the kapha and vata and then what are the qualities that have led to the change you know Absolutely. so you look at the whole picture yeah let me just translate beautiful beautiful Euh, donc, je lui demandais, je lui disais, euh, à Dr. Matkarni, je lui disais, bien, si Vata et Kappa, euh, est-ce que on, dans ces deux chats-là, est-ce que ça va être différent comment on va regarder l'inflammation? Puis elle revient constamment à la base en disant, chaque dos chat a des façons de, de protéger euh, son équilibre. Et la définition, puis on le rappelle, on l'a déjà dit dans d'autres entrevues ici, mais on le rappelle, Le terme dosha, c'est un terme sanscrit qui signifie ce qui peut créer le chaos à l'intérieur d'une constitution précise. Donc, pour quelqu'un qui est pita, ce qui peut créer le chaos, donc quelqu'un qui est pita dominant, c'est d'aggraver le dosha pita en premier. Ça va la précipiter plus rapidement en déséquilibre. Même chose pour vata, même chose pour kappa. Et elle disait que Euh, c'est tout en modération et il faut toujours protéger son euh, dosha dominant, dominant d'aller en déséquilibre. Et euh, donc, euh, fait que c'est ça. Alors, c'est, c'est pour chacun des doshas, ça va être de rester en équilibre et de faire ce qui lui est propre. Si Kappa jeûne pendant trop longtemps, oui, Kappa va être capable d'endurer ça un certain temps parce que Kappa est tellement... Euh, déjà nourri, puis de, déjà un, un dosha qui est euh, euh, souvent plus capable de le prendre parce que sa digestion est déjà lente, parce que des fois, ça lui fait du bien d'espacer des repas. Mais s'il attend trop longtemps, il va autant tomber en déséquilibre qu'un vata. Donc, euh, wonderful. So, talk to us now about the root causes of, of in your practice and what you've seen and in your studies and as for Ayurveda, what is the main root cause you've seen that have aggravated inflammation right now? So in Ayurveda, if you're talking from like a traditional concept, you know, we look at three factors that are responsible for all diseases. One is misuse of senses, right? So whenever we talk about five senses, we are looking at vision, we are looking at taste, we are looking at hearing, we are looking at touch, we are looking at smell. So those are the five senses. So any misuse, any or use, like you're not using it at all, or you're overindulging, that will that is one way you are b- bringing an imbalance in your body systems because the senses are the connection between the internal and the external world. So an example is, you know, during COVID times, we all watched a lot of TV. We were constantly glued to the media, trying to understand what was happening, you know. So that overexposure to certain, you know, events that had happened during the time, which was very fear-inducing, started building up a lot of vata aggravation in people, right? Similarly, we see indulgence of the taste buds right we look at diets that are highly refined today quick foods uh, sugar high foods 
fats that are not clean fats that are not natural fats so lots of trans fats in the fried foods um, we are looking at a lot of artificial preservatives we are looking at pesticides we genetically modified food so the food has gone for like a change completely then the ayurvedic times and then the way we are consuming is we are not mindful of it at all so that is one of the main causes the second one we always talk about is pradnya parad which means any act that you do against your intelligence failure of the intellect yeah so every time you know somehow in that corner of your heart you know that you're not doing the right thing and still you continue to neglect that voice right which says that hey you know that's the voice of your intellect that you should not be eating that ice cream at night if you are yeah, prone to sinusitis and you end up eating that ice cream and the next day you have like a sinus infection right or your body tells you your intellect tells you that hey it's time to sleep now but you want to finish that assignment or you want to just complete that one last thing i can i can i can answer your email at 2 <laughs> i'm super good <laughs> yeah or watching series you know not yeah. eating on time running around so we are ignoring our intellect every day at least everybody was up watching painkillers so that's the <laughs> <good> thing yeah <laughs> and then the third is the seasonal variation right yeah. so for example right now we are experiencing an extremely heat spell yes everywhere in canada right okay. and it's not supposed to be this hot when we are nearing the fall so that is an abnormal lity in the seasons sometimes you'll see suddenly there are thunderstorms or suddenly it becomes really cold or suddenly in the winter there is no snow no cold right so those are seasonal changes that we cannot control and those will affect the body as well then there are so many environmental causes you know we just went through a big pandemic of covid so certain causes related to viruses but virus bacteria all external things can invade the body only if the body is not optimal hmm. if your immunity is strong if your body is strong you should be able to fight it okay So let me just translate that, and then I, I just want to go, and I, I then I just want to dive a little bit um, deeper in those causes, because you've been fascinated with the gut. Yeah. And so I I want to look at the practices or remedies because I think you, yeah, you discover. Um, how uh, to even prevent even more yeah so let me just uh, translate what we we've, we've been saying uh, alors je lui demandais à docteur Nakarni je lui dis ben alors euh, c'est quoi les causes racines de euh, l'inflammation selon la yurveda et elle nous a ramené comme on a déjà discuté précédemment ici mais c'est un excellent rappel et mettre la table de euh, euh, il y a trois facteurs de maladie. Donc, en Ayurveda, la première, c'est la mauvaise utilisation de vos sens. Donc, pourquoi les sens? Parce que les sens sont la connexion entre l'intérieur et l'extérieur du corps. Et donc, euh, par exemple, dans, durant la pandémie et le COVID, on a, tout le monde était devant la télévision à regarder des nouvelles qui étaient effrayantes, qui amenaient beaucoup d'anxiété. Et donc, on a eu des pics de dosha vata qui se sont aggravés et euh, l'anxiété, l'insomnie, euh, la sécheresse, donc tout ça est venu euh, entre autres euh, de cette mauvaise utilisation là de nos sens. Euh, on, il y a eu des euh, augmentations aussi euh, de, du sucre, donc on consomme de plus en plus et on recherche des aliments sucrés. Les gras qui ne sont plus des gras qui sont clean, comme les gras trans, les, euh, les, euh, les OGM. Et, euh, et aussi, on consomme sans être présent, euh, 
avec notre nourriture. Une parenthèse, une des choses qu'on m'apprend en Ayurveda, c'est quand on mange, on s'apprête à manger, on va rendre grâce pour notre nourriture. On va prendre un moment pour vraiment, selon votre culture, prier ou remercier, mais ce moment-là permet de se ramener présent au fait qu'on va aller faire quelque chose d'important qui est de consommer, de digérer de la nourriture. Euh, également, euh, la, la deuxième cause de racine de maladie pour l'Ayurveda, c'est quand ton intellect échoue à prendre les bonnes décisions. Donc, c'est de faire taire constamment cette voix-là à l'intérieur de nous, de nous qui dit, par exemple, euh, tu sais que ce n'est pas bon de prendre la crème glacée en soirée près de l'heure du coucher. Donc, tu la supprimes et tu le fais pareil. Bien, le lendemain, tu as une crise de foie où tu ne te sens pas bien, où tu n'as pas dormi de la nuit. Bien, ton, tu as fait défaut à cette voie-là intérieure. Ça, c'est la deuxième cause. Quand on n'écoute on on pas euh, cette voix-là qui nous parle à l'intérieur de nous et, et notre intellect qui nous guide pour prendre les bonnes décisions. Et la troisième raison de, pour la maladie en Ayurveda, c'est les changements euh, saisonniers auxquels on n'a pas vraiment de contrôle. Par exemple, euh, en ce moment, il a fait très chaud à travers le Canada euh, de manière anormale. Bien, ça, on n'a pas de contrôle et ça amène les symptômes que ça amène. Donc, euh, mais euh, elle mentionnait si ton corps est, est optimal, ces choses-là, euh, tu ne tomberas pas malade. Si ton corps est optimal, typiquement, tu es, 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 es supposé être capable de les combattre et de ne pas euh, tomber malade. So, do you want to do you want to add a little bit about when we aside from those three factors of disease in Ayurveda? Do you want to dive a bit deeper and give us a glimpse because you have a program related to that and I want people to be able to join your program, which you have on right now, about gut and inflammation. I don't know if you want to. Yeah, no, for sure. That's a really good question. So why the gut, right? I know we didn't really talk much about the gut now, but why the gut? Because see, we have different body systems, but the one that interacts the most with food or anything entering your body, right? When we are looking at the bioconversion of food, I always tell people that, you know, you eat a chicken, it's not staying a chicken in your body. You know, everything that we eat, has to be broken down it has to be digested the nutrients have to be absorbed and then the wastes have to be eliminated so you are not just what you eat but you are what you digest what you assimilate and also what you eliminate and if any of these processes fail or not work optimally there is a tendency you are going to be very toxic there is a tendency for ill health From an Ayurvedic perspective, it's the digestive fire that's converting the food into different body tissues. So whether we are looking at blood, whether we look at muscle mass, whether we look at the body fat that's insulating you, your nerves or your reproductive fluids or your vital essence, everything comes from the food that you're eating and that has to go via your gut via your digestive fire and then get incorporated into the body. And that is why often, you know, people focus on the hormones or people focus on joint health, but they are not aware that all the symptoms that you're seeing in different systems are actually originating from the digestion, from a poor digestion, from a poor gut health. And that is why Ayurveda says that all diseases are caused by mandagni or a sluggish digestive fire. If you are unable to digest food, if you are unable to pick up the nutrients, if you are unable to eliminate the wastes, your body is going to be thrown out of balance. Okay, let me just, uh, let me just uh, translate that. So, so, uh, so mandagni is prevalent. Mandagni is most common. Okay. So 
Alors, le docteur Nakarni mentionne euh, son intérêt, un de ses champs d'intérêt, et elle a un programme en ce moment auquel vous pouvez vous joindre. Et c'est comme ça que j'ai euh, appris à travailler avec elle encore plus en étant dans son programme qui est gratuit en ce moment. C'est un groupe qui a lieu encore quelques jours. Et elle, elle est fascinée par, et c'est un de ses objets de recherche, l'intestin, euh, mais du point de vue ayurvédique. Et elle mentionne, elle dit, c'est la bioconversion qui est euh, si importante au niveau de l'intestin parce que euh, si c'est pas juste tu es ce que tu digères, c'est tu es ce que tu digères, ce que tu manges, ce que tu digères, ce que tu assimiles et ce que tu élimines. Et elle mentionnait que parce que si ça ne fonctionne pas bien, tu vas avoir une tendance à la toxicité. Et euh, tous tes tissus, que ce soit les muscles, euh, le gras, euh, que ce soit les os, que ce soit euh, euh, la lymphe, le plasma, etc., tout ça est fait euh, à partir du feu digestif qu'on appelle Agni en Ayurveda. Et elle dit, les gens vont fonctionner sur les hormones. Ils vont fonctionner, ils vont, pardon, pas fonctionner, les gens vont focusser sur les hormones ou ils vont focusser sur d'autres symptômes. Mais pour l'Ayurveda, on ramène ça et c'est un des focus principaux en Ayurveda au feu digestif. Et en Ayurveda, un feu digestif qui n'est pas assez élevé, ça s'appelle mandagni, et mandagni, c'est que votre digestion n'est pas, à, elle, est, elle, est, euh, elle est lente, elle est incomplète, ce qui fait que les aliments ne sont pas tout digérés, ça crée euh, des déchets dans le corps qui s'appellent ama, et euh, plus que ça, ça fait en sorte que même si vous mangez bien, puis les gens disent, oh, je mange des bons aliments, je mange bien, je fais attention, <coughs> oui, mais si tu n'es pas capable, d'extraire les nutriments. <rire> si tu n'es pas capable de bien digérer, le docteur Nakarni dit que ça ne change pas grand-chose. Donc, euh, et je lui ai dit, ben, j'ai dit comme ça, selon vous, mandagni ou le feu digestif qui n'est pas assez fort et qui est incomplet et une digestion trop lente, c'est euh, généralisé à différents du très commun. Anything else you wanted to add on that subject before we move on to maybe practices or remedies that people could uh, do to help out a bit? Sorry for the noise. Uh, I think that's a good introduction, you know, to the gut health. And uh, so this gut health challenges can happen at different levels, as I was saying, you know, they can happen at... Um, the level of the digestive fire where you're seeing that, oh, I'm getting acid reflux or I'm getting diarrhea, I'm getting constipation. Or sometimes if you don't take care of your digestion too much, it starts affecting other systems. An example is, you know, somebody could have osteoporosis and they're not picking up the calcium. They're not picking up any of the magnesium phosphorus from the food. Uh, sometimes people talk about being anemic where, you know, they take so much iron, but their body is not picking up right? So those are different ways, you know, you can understand that the digestive fire is not very strong. And if you want to heal your body, no matter what system you want to heal, you always have to start with digestion. No matter how expensive supplements you take, no matter how organic foods you eat, you know, if you want to absorb it, you want to digest it, there has to be a strong digestive fire. Donc, euh, alors, alors, elle mentionne, elle dit, concernant la digestion et le feu digestif, tu peux avoir des, des challenges comme l'acidité, tu vas avoir des reflux, tu vas avoir de la diarrhée, de la constipation. Mais elle dit, peu importe le magnésium que tu prends, tu peux développer de l'ostéoporose quand même s'il n'est pas capable d'être métabolisé. Et guérir commence toujours à, propos, à partir de la digestion. Et euh, peu importe les suppléments que tu prends, peu importe la nourriture organique que tu prends, ça part de la digestion. So, just uh, for, for my personal info, um, um, 
uh, somebody who follows our page was asking about um, a doctor in Ayurveda that could help out with cancer. Do you take cancer uh, client? I do work with cancer clients, but uh, sometimes when the disease is that advanced, you need a few practitioners to work together, right? So definitely you can reach out. We can discuss a little bit more about your requirements. Um, and definitely, we can work together. Perfect. Donc, si jamais il y a des gens parmi vous, parce qu'il y a une cliente qui nous a écrit, et euh, je vais lui revenir, mais qui cherchait un médecin ayurvédique qui pouvait travailler avec elle pour un cas de cancer, euh, vous pouvez contacter le euh, docteur Nakarni. Et euh, à ce moment-là, souvent, c'est plusieurs praticiens ensemble. Ça se peut qu'elle travaille avec votre médecin oncologue aussi. Euh, mais euh, oui, il y a des euh, patients en dépendamment du stade de l'avancement avec qui elle va travailler. And if somebody was speaking French and wanted to have a member of the family that can translate, it would be fine, right? As long as you're comfortable with it, I'm perfectly fine with it. Perfect. Donc, si jamais vous parlez français, qu'il y a quelqu'un qui peut être, euh, vous êtes confortable à ce que ce soit, euh, 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 qui soit au courant de votre santé, mais que vous voulez que la personne soit présente sur place et traduise, vous pourriez certainement avoir quelqu'un dans votre entourage qui pourra agir comme traducteur et être présent. OK. So, let's talk about the program you're offering right now. So, do you want to say a few words before I translate? Because there's still a few days and I want to invite people to join. There's so much great stuff. I've learned so much. You've been so generous. There were five videos and the Q&As and, and the homework. So, do you want to talk a bit about it? Yeah, sure. So this is something that I absolutely enjoyed. Uh, so thank you so much for the invitation here. And it is called the five-day gut reset challenge. So in five days, I walk you through different videos where we talk about healing and repairing your gut. You know, we are not just talking something like superficial. We are actually diving deep. So each video is an hour long training and it is taken step by step, you know. So I have a formula that I use in my practice called the IR3 method where first is identify. You know, we need to identify what's going wrong. What are the imbalances? The second step is to remove them, which is the R. The third one is to restore your digestive secretions, peristalsis. And the fourth one is repairing the gut lining as well as repairing your diet lifestyle. So in this IR3 formula is what I walk you through in the five day challenge. You are going to learn interesting topics like how do you know whether you have too much acid in the stomach or low acid? How do you know that what symptoms you're seeing are those digestion related or something else? We also talk about food sensitivities, gluten, dairy. We talk about gut inflammation. You know, today we did a general talk on inflammation, but there I teach you how to identify gut inflammation. And I have also discussed the difference between fermented foods. So kombucha, sauerkraut, you know, they are very popular. So are probiotic supplements popular? So I also discuss the difference between them. Uh, so these five videos are hour long trainings on different aspects of gut health in a very step-by-step -step organized way. And at the same time, I have done videos on answering any questions, you know, the most common questions. So these are hour long trainings plus half an hour of the Q&A that you can still get. Um, I was so blessed, so excited. I had about 330 people join. I know, I know. It was like, it was crazy <laughs> over there. Yeah, I yeah, know. We have 222 people in the group. And, and everybody was showing up. Like, you know, sometimes you have those trainings, 10 attend and everybody's invisible. But no, people were exchanging. Everybody was working on the homework. Yeah questions great yeah. questions yeah so you have a workbook which will help you keep track of everything and for people that complete their homework you know you also get an anti-inflammatory gut healing recipes you get 10 recipes free from me just to show up just to finish your homework right and the we offer like is teachers like that 
Like it's not that like that in my classes most of the time. <laughs> yeah, so you can still join. So for those interested, you know, the group is still open till September 11th. We have all the video trainings that you can access for free. After September 13th, the group will close down. But oh. September 11th, yeah, you have all free trainings you can take advantage of. You can get the workbook. If you do your homework, send it to me. You can also get the additional recipe guide. And it's all completely free. I have taken so much time to make those slides. And I, I absolutely loved it. You know, I was it's, super happy. It's incredible. Like people... First of all, we can tell how much you love teaching. Oh yeah, like everybody told you. Everybody told you, and you dive really deep. And people were saying, "You are always wondering, you know, am I giving you guys too much? Are you guys following? Are you good?" But you really like people to really understand and and get the whole picture and really what's going on. And people loved it. And sometimes it was quite profound, quite you know detailed and. But it's a lot about empowering people. Yeah. See, um, I think knowledge is power. And I think you should take that responsibility of your own health. You know, we often go to a doctor and we expect a quick, quick fix, right? We expect a pill to fix us. But we have to educate ourselves when it comes to our health. I'm not talking about making everybody an Ayurvedic practitioner. I would love that, but <laughs> no, that's not going to happen. But at least the knowledge that is for your own health, for your own well-being, you should invest that time and energy into getting that knowledge, you know, to be able to understand how my digestion is, to be able to understand that whatever I'm eating, is it working for me or is it working against me? right? So the food that we eat, you know, it can be a double edged sword. Sometimes it will nourish you and act like a nectar, you know, it will nourish all your body tissues. If you eat the wrong food, the same works as a poison. Yeah, absolutely. Let me just translate about the program. And by the way, to all, everybody who's listening, I got to tell you guys, Dr. Nadkarni had no choice to extend the, <laughs> the program, the challenge, the five-day gut challenge, everybody was saying, no, well, we need to finish listening. We have the Q&A. We have more questions, the homework. So the enthusiasm and the motivation that you gave to the group, I have to commend you. I have to celebrate you for that because it was it's so interesting. You guys that are listening, you have to go and after this video, you have to go and join. You have to. If you listen to one video, you listen to one. If you have time. Like when I started video one, Dr. Nard Kearney, because I joined in late, I did like the entire videos. I have to finish the fifth one. I did like the four videos in two days. And I was taking all, I was listening to everything. It was it was at, at two in the morning, but I couldn't stop. So I thought to myself, if I'm positive and relaxed about it and very happy, maybe it doesn't influence my gut. <laughs> <laughs> so let me just translate. Alors, Dr. Nadkarni, pour ceux parmi vous qui comprenez l'anglais ou êtes capable de suivre sur des diapos ou, aller, ou même avec une amie, euh, je vous invite à aller, ça pourrait être avec une amie qui comprend l'anglais, parce que euh, son groupe est encore ouvert. Ça s'appelle Five Day Gut Reset Challenge. Je vais mettre ce lien. C'est un groupe sur Facebook. Euh, et elle présente, elle va vraiment en profondeur. C'est cinq vidéos d'une heure. Euh, vous avez cinq questions et réponses de 30 minutes. C'est gratuit. Et elle, elle euh, présente sa formule pour euh, euh, revenir euh, à une digestion optimale et c'est IR3, la formule qu'elle enseigne, et c'est euh, identifier, euh, remove, donc enlever, euh, après qu'on a identifié ce qui cause le problème digestif chez vous, on l'enlève, et euh, en troisième, c'est restore, donc euh, euh, remettre en état de marche, et euh, le dernier, c'est réparer, 
Donc, on va réparer euh, la paroi gas, le gastro-intestinale. Et euh, donc, les vidéos, ça a été sur des sujets autant comme euh, comment savoir si vous faites trop d'acidité ou s'il y a un manque d'acidité pour digérer, euh, les intolérances alimentaires, la différence entre la nourriture fermentée et les probiotiques, euh, l'inflammation. On a eu tout un long vidéo d'une heure sur l'inflammation. What was the I'm missing one subject? There was the uh, acidity, food sensitivities, yeah. fermented food, inflammation. I'm missing one. Um, the 10 surprising symptoms of unhealthy gut. Ah, uh, yeah. Et euh, l'autre vidéo, c'était euh, les 10 symptômes surprenants d'un intestin euh, qui ne fonctionne, qui n'est pas en santé optimale. Et en plus, vous allez, euh, si vous remplissez le petit devoir et vous lui remettez, vous allez recevoir 10 recettes gratuites pour euh, vous aider euh, quant à la digestion. Euh, et le programme, ce programme gratuit-là, continue seulement jusqu'au 11 septembre. Fait que c'est maintenant, parce que le 13 septembre, le groupe va fermer. Anything else you would like to add before I ask you just a few simple practice or remedies that people could use as a, a getaway, as a takeaway, sorry. Yeah, um, so one of the most basic thing that we all forget to do is sit and eat, right? So The one thing I always tell people is digestion is a neurobiological process. Your brain is signaling your mouth to secrete the saliva. Your brain is signaling your digestion, you know, to secrete the juices, right? So you have to pay attention to your food. And this is written in 5,000 year old Ayurveda, you know, it has very strict practices when it comes to dietary um, factors, like you have to sit and eat, you cannot laugh too much, you cannot eat something you don't enjoy. So you have to bring all your senses, you have to calm down, you have to ground yourself, then you eat, you will chew the food really well. So you're not making your body work harder. You don't need that extra enzymes to be pushed, you know. You don't need your stomach to break the food down because your teeth didn't break it down too much, right? So if you follow those simple practices of chewing really well, taking the time, sitting down, eating what you enjoy, right? Some people eat food that they don't enjoy just because somebody said it's healthy for them. But if you don't like the food, you are not going to digest it, right? So cut through all these, you know, food trends that happen in the modern day to day, you know, one day it's keto, next day it's paleo, third day you turn to some other diet. So don't fall into those fads and just try to learn more about yourself, you know, your body type, your constitution, and try to plan the diet accordingly and when you plan your diet you want to make sure it's supporting your physical body and also your mind because that's what the food does you know it helps your body but it's also building your mind so how calm you are or how agitated you are how happy you are or how low mood you have will depend on the kind of food you eat right? So these are simple things that you can control, you know, you have a lot more power than you think you do. So if you utilize your power, you harness your power, you can have so much better health. And one thing that I kept talking to all the people during the challenges, you know, you don't have to see the whole staircase, you have to know the next step, you just want to take that one step and then the one more step, and then the one more step. And as time goes, you know, slowly things start falling into place. But if you don't take that first step towards your health today, you are not going to make any change. And five years later, you are going to be either in the same position or a not so good position too, right? Because when pathology happens, the more time has gone, the more difficult it is to reverse. So if you take charge of your health, you support yourself, you look for the right herbs, the right practitioners, but also the right practices that you do for yourself, it will create a huge shift for your health. Yeah, so I really want to encourage everyone, if you're listening to this, please pay attention to my advice and start using this knowledge 
for your health. You know, you have to take that accountability of your own health and you have to start somewhere. So if you want to start the challenge, I've given uh, uh, Marie the link for the challenge. You can still join the challenge and you will get access to it till 11th. Um, so go for it. And, you know, all the videos are there hosted. There is the workbook that's hosted. And you can go through it, you know, if you sit down on the weekend, you can even fill all the videos in one day. Yeah, I, absolutely. This is this is what, I, what I've been doing because you, you, it opens consciousness so much that you, you, you want that light and you crave for more because you finally get answers. Yeah. And just getting answers bring your stress down and stress leads the train. Yeah. Make sure, uh, I'll translate, but please, Dr. K uh, Natkarni, make sure you put the um, link to join the group within our uh, conversation, our messenger conversation. Yeah. Because then, because I know after this, you're going to be off maybe to some more uh group uh activities or, or just yeah so this is the link like you join the challenge you will be directed to an email and the email will push you to the group perfect i'll i'll let them know that perfect but just put in our conversation because afterwards i need to go write uh some text yeah in the comments and so people can find it yeah Thank you. Right okay now. so um alors, euh, parmi les, les remèdes que vous pouvez déjà mettre en place pour commencer à apaiser, si vous ressentez ces symptômes-là, si vous avez l'impression que le feu digestif n'est pas là, donc premièrement, de vous asseoir pour manger. Et elle dit, c'est tellement important de se souvenir que notre cerveau envoie le signal à notre bouche de commencer à créer la salive. Donc, il y a vraiment... En Ayurveda, là, c est, c est, c est, euh, on, il faut manger euh, en état assis. Euh, il, y a, il y a plusieurs règles qui entourent la prise des repas, mais notamment, tu ne peux pas être constat, rire trop en étant en train de manger. C'est important de mastiquer. C'est dans des livres d'il y a 5000 ans de mastiquer pour défaire le plus possible la nourriture dans la bouche pour pas que ce soit au niveau de l'estomac que tout le travail des intestins et de la digestion que tout le travail va être fait. Euh, également, de s'enraciner, de se déposer au moment de manger et euh, manger des, des choses qu'on aime. Docteur Nadkarni disait, il y a plein de ses clients qui lui racontent, euh, ben, je mange ça parce qu'on m'a dit qu'il fallait manger ça puis c'est bon pour la santé, mais j'ai ma... <rire> je déteste mes repas. Donc, euh, évidemment, ça ne sera pas bien digéré. Et elle disait de ne pas tomber dans les modes de keto, paléo, le, tous les, 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 les modes au niveau des régimes alimentaires. Rester sur des, 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 des grandes bases nutritionnelles et euh, de ce qui a été éprouvé depuis des milliers d'années. Euh, également, euh, de regarder aussi votre état mental. Si ce que vous mangez vous convient, vous êtes supposé être joyeux, vous êtes supposé avoir un certain enthousiasme, vous êtes supposé avoir un regard positif. Si vous êtes déprimé, si vous n'avez pas d'énergie, si vous êtes constamment anxieux, il y a quelque chose qui est en lien avec la nourriture là-dedans aussi. Là. Donc, c'est important parce que la bonne nourriture va vous soutenir mentalement aussi. Euh, également, elle, elle a dit quelque chose euh, qu'elle a répété souvent durant son cinq jours euh, de reset euh, pour l'intestin, euh, son challenge, son groupe euh, Facebook. Euh, elle dit que c'est important de ne pas regarder tout l'escalier au complet. Quand on veut guérir une pathologie ou quand on veut retrouver une santé optimale, elle dit on va juste prendre la première marche. On va juste regarder la première marche et prendre celle-là. Elle dit, des fois, juste la première marche va créer un monde de changements. Donc, euh, alors, euh, et elle dit, vous savez, plus tu attends parce que tu regardes tout l'escalier, tu te dis, mais ça va être trop gros, puis je ne pourrai jamais, puis je ne serai pas capable, puis il y a trop de choses. Et elle dit, le temps passe pendant ce temps-là, et dans les pathologies, 
plus on laisse passer du temps, plus ça devient difficile à renverser. Donc, euh, je, quand on va avoir conclu la vidéo, je vais vous mettre le lien pour joindre ce groupe Facebook-là duquel vous allez pouvoir énormément bénéficier jusqu'au 11 septembre. C'est gratuit. Vous allez recevoir un courriel et le courriel va vous amener dans le groupe comme tel. Donc, euh, Dr. Nat Carney, it's been a, a, an honor to have you and all your generous content and knowledge. Uh, and having your knowledge is great power. Uh, so thank you. Et je veux remercier Dr. Nat Carney de nous avoir donné si généreusement ce soir. Elle dit que savoir, c'est pouvoir. Et je la remercie de sa générosité. Anything else you want to add for the final words? And I can translate. So focus on your digestion. <laughs> you know, like digestion is the key. Always focus on your agni, right? It's the fire. It's the sacred fire that we're feeding with the food. So every time we eat, it's like you're putting some, you know, ablutions into the fire, right? You're feeding the sacred fire. So always, you know, feed your agni with the right things and take care of your agni. Donc, elle mentionne, elle dit, l'agni en Ayurveda, c'est le feu sacré à l'intérieur de nous. Donc, focussez sur votre digestion. À chaque fois que vous mangez, imaginez que vous mettez quelque chose sur le feu. Ça va-tu l'éteindre ou ça va l'aider à bien brûler? Et protégez votre digestion. Il y a tant de choses qui découlent de ça. Et ça, l'Ayurveda le savait il y a 5000 ans. So, Thank you very much. Have a blessed evening. Thank Sweet. you for everyone who joined. And uh, I hope to have, again, the privilege to uh, have you on here uh, in the future. For sure. Thank you so much. Namaste. Namaste. Thank you, everyone. Thanks.